fundamentally law is something from which we can use as the basis for civilised dealing in a society without killing each other and uh, as the method of solving problems. But if we don't have a good fundamental law system that applies to everybody, then we may as well not have one at all. The purpose of the law has changed over the last century or so, where it's now a matter of parliament or government having control of the people, which is not the true intent of the law or purpose of the law. One of the key things about any law is, as Geoffrey Robertson put it, is that it's got to have a system of law which has inherent in it that a citizen can defeat the government if necessary. We now have a system of law in which the citizen can't defeat the government and which the, the system has been rigged to ensure that the citizen can't beat the government. Now what we did is we decided we'd set out, firstly just to get the facts out into the public. To say to the people, hang on, what is this that you're obeying? What is this law that you're obeying? What's its source? What's its origin? What's its authority? And do you still accept it? Now, the government got the wind of this, and so they ran the Republic debate in November 1999. Most people tend to think that that debate was about the Republic question as whether or not we had a, a, uh, an Australian head of state. In fact, the real question was question two, the so-called preamble question. The so-called preamble question contains a clause which says we the Australian people commit ourselves to this constitution. It is the first and only vote ever taken of the entire Australian people about the constitution by which we're governed. And by 60.66% to 39.34% the people said no. So uh, people were told in that booklet if they voted yes, they would be voting for the, re for the Republic. And if they voted no, they'd be voting for Section 9 only of the Constitution. So the fact that the no vote got up uh, reinforces the government's position that only Section 9 of the Constitution applies. And I believe in 10 or 20 years' time, that'll be the proposition they'll put to the people that, you know, Australia voted on it in 1999 and they accepted only Section 9 as being the Constitution, when in fact it's not. The Constitution that we have in Australia is Clause 9 of a United Kingdom Act passed in July 1900. The first eight clauses, or the so-called uh, covering clauses, Clause 8 of that describes the Commonwealth as a self-governing colony. And for the purposes of law, that's what it remains. Now in the 21st century, that's just no longer valid. In 1998, there was a further development. I think the various people in Melbourne realised that the politicians weren't going to give them uh, an adequate forum to have these issues ventilated. So they thought the opportunity would be, OK, we get some cases going, we get them into the High Court, and the, and the politicians aren't prepared to fix it, but the judiciary put it in front of them, uh, them being honest people, we would expect them to fix the problem. At least make the politicians aware they have a major issue legally for the legal basis of law in this country. The theory is that the courts are independent of government, but I think that's long proven not to be the case. This is the first time these issues were put before the highest legal body uh, in Australia. The first time the High Court had the opportunity to view these issues, uh, it was by way of a, an application, a Section 40 lift application from a lower court, and the decision is Jose versus the ASIC, which was handed down, I think, 12th of December. It was dealt with on the 12th of December, 1998. And what Justice Haynes said in that um, meeting was that he had a duty to protect the system. 
we felt a bit cheated by that because we thought he was there to interpret the law and apply the law correctly. That apparently was, appeared to be secondary to preserving the system. I think clearly the Australia Act, in the way that it uh, enacts Australia as a separate um, nation and separating from England, has logistical and legal problems in that any changes to a constitution requires a referendum in this country. And clearly uh, the Australia Act does change the constitution, in fact it changes the heads of the constitution and that was done without a referendum and on that basis I would think that it was illegal. The fact is we have a bureaucracy which has inherited its original powers from the convict days it hasn't changed its methods from the, conduct, the convict days it hasn't changed its attitudes from the convict days they regard themselves as the public masters not as public servants so we deliberately we decided that the way of challenging this would be to challenge not the weakest department of the government but the strongest and of course the first thing we found was that there was no such animal. The fact is nobody had ever actually created the taxation department. The constitutional basis on which our money was taken off us was never done. And in October 1999, before the federal court, we actually proved that it had never been done. Here was something which should have been absolutely fundamental. If you or I set up a new company and didn't register it or didn't file the right papers or didn't appoint people the right way, we would be in court and fined. And yet here we have the most influential and important department in the country which had no legal existence. Well, we went into courts. So we fought now some nine high court cases numerous cases in other courts and we sought to apply the very simple standard that if the people were being had to obey the law then the taxation officers had to obey the law and we discovered that the courts were not prepared to make taxation officers obey the law the courts were not prepared to say this is not legally done the right way it must be fixed the courts allowed the taxation officers to carry on illegally and in one fell swoop they demonstrated that the true function of the courts was not justice it was not all of the separations of powers etc which they like to protest is what is their their true guide but they were simply uh, a an executive instrument whose job it was to safeguard the revenue and the money coming in to pay their own salaries. Currently represented as the 1914 Crimes Act that actually stipulates that if you interact with, pay or encourage a known illegal entity, it is a seven year jailable offence. And here we have on the website a document stating that the entire Australian Taxation Office is illegal. The Constitution, under Section 51, gives the government the right to make laws for peace, order and good government. In the High Court, about two years ago, the High Court ruled that we were not entitled to fair and just tax laws. And that's the statement of the Chief Justice of the High Court. Now, if fair and just tax laws are not orders, are not laws for peace, order and good government. What are? And what people seem to forget is that just about every major revolution in history started on the basis of unjust taxation. When our tax system was first set up, we had a system which taxed most of the business in this country. Today, most of the businesses in the country is done by overseas-owned companies who in turn pay their taxes overseas, but not in Australia. The result is that you've got to collect more and more tax from the ordinary taxpayer, from the small man. And that, of course, gets more and more unfair. 